It's after midnight, and it's time for conversations about love, family, friends, sex, and life. It's Love and Life with Carol Riddick and Donovan West, only on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Well, hello there, family. Welcome to yet another edition of Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's W-U-R-D radio.com. I am one half of your hosting team. I am none other than Carol Riddick, and I am joined by my partner in crime. You already know every time I can, I'm here. Donovan West, what's going on, Carol? What's good? What is that? Every you know, every time I'm here, every time I can, I'm here. What? Oh, is, what? Why are you coming for me this early? Is this what, what? we're going to do? Is this what, what we're going to do? I mean, where are you? On what planet would you be that you can't oh, spend God. some time? You can't come and chit Listen, and chat and chat you know and what? chew. We will not do this in front of our WURD <laughs> family. I'm joking. Yes, we will. That's I was what, about to say, don't we do it all the time? They here for we? it. They here for it. They're there with their mugs right now, sipping their tea, coffee, or something else. And, uh, you know, know, speaking of mugs, we'll we'll come back to that. We'll come back. No, we can address that right now. Okay. What he's talking about is my mug. Can you see that? This is my self love mug. Okay. Mm -hmm. From the Carol Riddick collection. And I have, and I'm not going to do this, but I have green tea in my mug. You see the shade. I I didn't ask you what was in your mug. No, no. This is for the family members who are wondering (laughs) why you made the statement you made family. Mm -hmm. I want you to know he comes for me all the time, but you know that. Because you are here, you rock and you roll with us. And you know how he comes for me. In my self-love mug mm-hmm. is none of Speaking of rocking and rolling. No, no. Is my matcha green tea with oat milk and honey. That's what's, that's what's got you rocking and rolling. Right. That, that right matcha green tea with um, the honey and the oats in it. That's Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what, that's what you said. I mean, that's what you said. With the oats. We, uh... The oat milk. Oh, the oat milk. Right. Yes. I mean, I, I I thought I saw something or more substance in there. But whatever. Just moving right along, good people. <laughs> no, you, you know, did it. <laughs> speaking of rocking and rolling, thank you all for rocking and rolling with us. Those of you that are checking mm. us out, uh, you know, through the, the social media stream, through our online platforms. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. If you can see us and hear us, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And you're probably wondering who's this third person uh, that you're seeing. And, uh, you know, for those who don't know, and I'm not going to go with my introduction. Initially, I thought about an introduction of John Barber, but that would be the whole show because I've known him a long time and he does so many amazing things. I think it's important that John Barber himself do the introduction. What are your thoughts about that, Carol? <laughs> yeah, well, you you want our guest to introduce himself. That's right. That was not your insult. You want me to insult? I, I, insult him? I'll insult him and just tell you just a couple things about him. Oh All right. oh this goodness. this guy is a philanthropist, a father. Okay, he's a a, a presence in the music community. Uh, he's a you know he's he's a guy that I would say has both hemispheres working in terms of math, science, from an accounting <laughs> standpoint, arts, music, and everything else in that space also popping at at, at a hundred. Like literally mm-hmm. one of the few guys I've known throughout the years that really has a equal presence and impact in both spaces. You know, I can talk to John about business and I'm talking about deep conversations mm-hmm. about business and operations and expansion. And I can also talk to him about favorite artists and, and he'll do, he'll one up me. He'll get on stage and he'll <laughs> sing and rap, you know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know, you know, this is John Barber, thanks for joining us. Thank We've got to get both. some sound effects. Thank you, thank you. This is a pleasure <laughs> to be with two of my favorites and two of the best radio voices that I've been around in some time. Oh, no, no cap, you, no cap as a young thank voice. You. So. you know we love you, so you don't have I to give us that. You know thank we you. do. Big time, bro. <laughs> Glad made time to squeeze me in. This squeeze guy. you? What? Did, Are you kidding is me? He, is he coming for us now? He's, 
no, no. no. This, this guy that we've been, I, what was it? February, I think we Listen, initially reached out to his people. I'm just like, happy to get the insult. I mean, the introduction. Get the insult. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're 40 and slip just said it all. He's like, you know, you want me to insult him? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Continue, please. Why not? <laughs> oh, my, oh my goodness. goodness. Let's open up the oh. exam with the man. It's I'm not ready. Stuff. I can tell you right now, I am not ready. I am hey, not ready. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something though. I met John when I was first starting. Well, in a professional space, because the networking space is different. Like you know, parties mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah. But I remember I I just started uh, my company. Uh, it's called Multimedia MD. This mm. was two thousand three. Wow. Oh wow. And I had a client uh, that was doing a book uh, release, yeah. a book signing, book release, mm-hmm. and all this mm-hmm. stuff. And I was sitting there saying to my client, listen, I think outside the box, you know, blah, blah, blah. We want to do something different and engaging and entertaining. And the first person I thought of was John Barber. We had an office we were sharing with Star Shooters. That's right. Uh, Star uh, Cater Shooter. Street. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm going way back. 426 way back. Cater Street. Yeah. Wow. And that was our first office. And in the in the, the basement of it, what you could call it a basement, was a performance space, like a stage and really nice. And so we had a catered, and John Barber was gracious enough to be the host of that. And it was it was amazing. Great music and spoken word, and then some little excerpts from the author. And it was our first official event. And wow. John Barber was was uh, was uh, our guy to help deliver that. So there it is. Boom. I'm writing that down because even I didn't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm add that to my, to my, to my you know, book signing. Oh, my uh, goodness. Yeah. Well, John, you've done so much. You, I mean, and you continue to do so much now, Donovan. I don't know if you know because John used to manage me. He used to be my manager. Yeah. Did you know that? I did. You and there was another person that I was I was aware of back then. Of course, you know, music soul child. Yes. Those were the two people that I knew that he, you know. So, so yeah, he's he's been in the game for a minute. But um, I'm sure you got stories. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're family. Listen, we're family. You yeah. know, you you don't you don't be in as uh what do you you don't share as much space, time, energy, resources, and spirit yeah. as John and I have, and not have stories. We could Amen. we could sit and listen. We could chit and chat. And I can just tell you. I can just say when Carol, I was you know had the privilege of being her personal manager. Mm. In music, it was being part of the management team and then working more. Uh, on the tour management mm-hmm. side, but um, you know, the utmost Carol is the consummate professional. <laughs> I mean, the detail, the dedication to her craft, mm-hmm. I mean, physically, mentally, spiritually, what she pours into her music and the product, you know, it's to this day that I smile when I hear a Carol with its song, you know, and mm-hmm. I was jokingly talking to you both about the gym last night, listening to her music on the way home, you know, just came up with my Apple shuffle. And, um, you know, I in your mind, you start reliving some of the experiences and seeing Carol in the studio or, mm-hmm. or seeing Carol yeah. working out or seeing Carol, like, really just in her space performing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I would look around the room and watch. And I can remember the early days watching oh her grip a crowd up. And I always mm-hmm. tell her that it was it's one on one for artists today, and a lot of the artists that did come up through that era, they all that I know of mm-hmm. give some kind of homage to Carol and say, "Hey, I got this from CR. You know, oh, I learned this from her form. So it was an amazing time, definitely. And still cool. to this day, you know, I'm I'm that guy that if I hear something for Carol booking the tracks, me whatever, if I can do something, I'm going to do it. I he does. He I, does. So. That's great. First of all, thank you for that. John. Wow. Thank you. Because we're here to talk about you. But <laughs> let me tell you, but no, I so appreciate that. I so I do, but y'all know, y'all know it's so hard for me to hear somebody talk about me. It's like, oh, okay, I want to write something down. In any event, I got stories for Donovan too. I'm sure. <laughs> No, I mean, do all good things. No, as a, just create, as a creative teasing. and as a professional. I mean, I used to, you know, I always tease him. I call him my big little brother because I always mm-hmm. felt as though Donovan walked that plane between both 
the both worlds, the multiverse in the universe. You know, I mean, he, he's that guy that hey, can touch so many lives, has touched, and like myself, doesn't realize what he's done and the impact on the people mm. that you help along the way. Thanks, because you're caught in the movement and you're always caught, caught in motion. And when, when you get hit with a jab, you know how to roll with the punch and come back out stronger, bigger, faster, better. So. Thank you, man. Um, I've always Appreciate had a high that. respect for that and speak highly to other people about you. And like I said, it's hard being part of different worlds and, and having people understand that some of us are built with the capability to to be in the professional as an executive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and produce and, can, mm -hmm. and, and still <clears throat> and take those arts, the, the skill set from the creative side and, and have some of that mixed in with the work you do when you're nine to five and, yeah. and still help and, and still be successful. Yeah. Where, you know, where and it's looked at sometimes like, oh, can that person really focus with all those eggs in this basket? Well, I know I got all the eggs. So I'm going to make sure I'm not going to drop them. Mm -hmm. I got, I got mm -hmm. my basket reinforced. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you worry about that. You know, <laughs> no, so I got this, but, but people would make their own perceptions and, we constantly not only fight to get the job done and produce, you fight to constantly keep proving that your capabilities. And, mm. and look, at, look at look at what's been done. I don't have to talk about it. Look at it. Good you point. Know, unfortunately, we, we go through that period with a lot of people question. Well, that well, they call that life, don't they? I mean, that's yes. a part of life. That's a yeah. part of but I I want to I want to pivot and talk about you, Jim. Right. I oh. want to, would you please share with our family members a little bit about you from where you come, where you were born and raised? Like, tell us who John Barber is. Uh, John Barber is a um, direct descendant of John Barber Jr., Overbrook High School Hall of Fame, Philadelphian, and Brenda Stokes Barber, Overbrook High School should be Hall of Fame. Just in her own rights, because you know how much I love my mom. But, um, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, John and Brenda from here, born and raised in, in West Philadelphia. Um, lived in Southwest for a time too, Winfield also. But um, I attended St. Ignatius, well, Most Blessed, Most Blessed Sacrament, which is known as MBS, in Chester Avenue. Was there for four years. Went to Greenfield, Outreach Greenfield uh, Public School, then St. Ignatius. Uh, mm -hmm back to Catholic school and then uh, ended up at Central High School where um, I'm a proud Lansing alumni, active alumni, um, <laughs> president, well, vice president of junior senior classes, athlete, three sport athlete, um, tried to stay busy the whole time I was in school, proud graduate of HBCU, Delaware State University. You know, I played football, ran track for two years. I played football for four years varsity, five years varsity actually. Survivor of a brain aneurysm and uh, mm. kept it moving, you know, and had some tryouts and stuff, but got in a different pathway for me. And that's why I kind of ended up in the music world and um, um, activism, nonprofit, mm. corporate, and, um, and glad to be here in Philly. Glad to be home, you know, and do it here. John, you said survivor of a brain aneurysm? Yeah. He when just slid that? that in there, like yeah. He, I mean, when was this? That was my freshman year in college. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I I damaged my skin. I damaged. I had a head injury my senior year at high school, uh, in a football game, and I just blew it off, thinking it was just a knot on my head. Mm -hmm. The whole year, football, basketball, track, everything, with this lump on my head, and then I got to college and went head to head with my good friend, Robert Pressberry, remember come quick? Oh, Press. Press. My brother Press. Press, yes. Who was an All-American all defensive end who ended up playing for, in every level of professional football, World League, was at the Redskins, the Eagles, the Canadian League. We went head to head at practice. And the Philly in me was talking trash. You <laughs> know, like, yeah, big man, you ain't bringing back Philly. Blah, 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 blah. I got to the huddle and I was like, this straight like up, Wow. wow. I was in the hospital. And blood clots formed on my neck, down my shoulder, and they said we're gonna do surgery. And that's when we found out we had a, it was an aneurysm. So wow. you know, faced okay. with that challenge, uh, the choice 
to continue playing afterwards was 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 difficult because uh, I went through a period where I couldn't remember things mm -hmm. and when I was in college. So I was going to drop out. Mm -hmm. I told my parents I was going to join the service. My mother begged me to stay in. She made me, I got a tutor and then I got a second tutor. Mm -hmm. And I just said, I just can't remember things. And then I started writing things down as I was learning. And I started learning. That was my way of learning things. So I got millions of notepads where I would write. And then I started retaining it. And, mm. started coming back to it. and then um, wow. the second year, I, then I made a decision to come back and play. And um, I was a captain on the team. And, you know, we won four championships there. I was at Delaware State. So we only... I think I'm one of maybe six or seven of us that have four championships while playing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You see That's what pretty... I'm saying? Exactly. I say it all the time. You know, you think you know people, but as much mm -hmm. as you know, you know nothing. Nothing. Nothing you at know. all. You know, well, I, so... know Larry, I know Donovan thought I had a brand on the back of my head. That's what he thought. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, hey, I thought. Oh, I okay. thought. I thought. Oh Brenda, my goodness. I thought Brenda just had a little bit <laughs> too much of John one particular thing, <laughs> and that's evidence. That's what I thought. To myself. Oh my God. You love your God. <laughs> I always just start tagging you everywhere, huh? I love Miss Brenda. Don't you give that to her? No, I thought Brenda was like, look, you know what, John? Mm, take this. So That's what I Brenda, thought. You thought Brenda tagged me on Yeah, <laughs> I thought Brenda tagged you, and you know, I didn't say anything about oh, it because I was like, I, I want to. Self would have tried. I mean, believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I believe Miss Brenda could have. Okay, Listen, you know, she is a mighty woman. But she was. My don't mother give that was the main disciplinarian in the house. And <laughs> Carol, you know my mother. Yes, I skimming, love your mother. Skimming five feet. I'm gonna okay. give her her five feet. <laughs> You know, as she's aging, you know, I'm gonna let her know that you're okay. She's five, mm -hmm. I'm more than five. Yeah, you okay. Okay, okay. Five, exactly. I thought I'd have been six five if it wasn't for you. <laughs> but uh, you know, my dad was the one that was the cool presence that you had to really build up for him to explode. Mm -hmm. And the way for him to explode was get his woman mad. Mm. Oh man, you know they talk about you know I don't, we, you always see skits where they be like yo, you call mom or call dad at work, and then he's seething all the way home. So mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen when that big man hit the time he was like six three, three hundred pound former offensive lineman, Houston Oilers, and, and went to the Eagles, and then he stopped playing ball. And I'm looking, he would come down the hallway, you'd be like, oh, dang. <laughs> it's about to go there. It's about to go down. You know? but, and you can't it stop like, it. Yeah, it was one of the things, man. That we I could tell you stories where I where when he did lose it, you know, he did what he had to do, but mm -hmm. he kept that piece in the house. And my mother was no joke, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't you talk about no Miss Brenda? That's my girl. I know that's right. Girl. That is my girl, okay. Yeah, if it ain't positive, girl. it won't nope. happen on uh -huh. here. <laughs> amen to that. Amen. And, and and amen to you know to 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 her role in making sure that you st stayed on track. Yeah. Right? You know, the role yeah. that she played in terms of making sure that you did not veer off to the service and it's you know life trajectory oh, just go in a yeah. different space altogether. So so yeah. amen to to our parents yeah. that are able to to bring us in when we are mm. faced with crisis, right? Something, you know, again, I, I, I know that um, as an athlete too, right? You question everything when you are, um, you know, you're injured and the way that you're injured too. I mean, that's, yeah. that that's, was... that's different. That's not a broken arm or leg exactly. or something like mm. that. That's, you know, you're talking about a concussion uh, that actually went way, way deep. Yeah. That's um, life changing. That's yeah. that's yeah. life changing. I I, I I mean you saw me. I was looking in awe when you when you said it and quite honestly you just dropped it like it was yeah. nothing. I had a brain is wait, I'm like, like yeah, wait, like, wait, I'm sorry, because can we I rewind? I was young and dumb and really didn't know how serious it is, how serious an injury it was. But uh you know, I could just remember when I came back to school and they had shaved the whole part of it. It was like a, I used to wear this big old patch that they would have to keep changing and dressing. And you're walking around campus, and people looking at you like, you know, or you're at the basketball game going to cheer your boys on. You're like, oh man, people, and they take a picture and you see people looking at you. And I was like, yo, wow. this is really. I, 
you know, and it played it played with my with the mental a little bit. But then that summer, you know, when I started gaining, getting my gains back, and I started right. really training, and I started realizing how much I loved the game, and the game slowed down for me because it was really fast paced compared to high school. You know, mm-hmm. everybody's good on the next yeah. level, and um, and the coaches challenged me, and I told them that uh, at that time. My office coordinator, I told him that if I didn't start, then I would leave the team. You were courageous. Let me just say that at the core. Nothing but courage. But uh, family, if you have just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, progressive black talk media on air and online at wordradio.com. That's W-U-R-D radio.com. We're talking with none other than John Barber, who just, I mean, shared what what quite honestly was a life-changing experience. And he just shared how courageous he was to come back from it. But we are going to talk more about John's life when we come back from this commercial break. So stay with us, okay? Because we'll be right back. I remember this one moment. I ran to kind of the water edge and my mom said something along the lines of like, now it's your turn. Take that first step. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. There's some light within her that makes me continue to do the climate science work that I do. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. As moms, we care about our children and the environment they grow up in. And for Mia, I want you to know that I worked really hard to be a part of the change and to make it a better place for you. Email from school about the incident today. Scary. Tell me about it. Did you have any idea that was going on? None. I mean, you saw Derek at the game last night, too. Did you have a clue? No, but you know, teachers like me, parents, we don't always know as much as you guys do. Kids hear first about what's going on with other kids. Half the time, it's rumors. It can be hard to tell sometimes, but if you're ever concerned about a friend who's having trouble with alcohol, prescription drugs, bullying, violence, anything, you need to tell an adult. Mom or me, a teacher, coach, school counselor, someone you know and trust. Dad, no kid is going to tell an adult about that kind of stuff. I get it, but if we don't know, we can't help. Speaking up about a problem, that's what helping a friend is all about. You know, a lot of people say, when you're going somewhere, you don't want to look back. But I beg a different. For her to see her father celebrate his graduation, it's the best feeling in the world. I can't lie and say it was easy. But sometimes you just have to stop everything and take it in. I looked at everything in a different light. I realized it started with me going back and getting my high school diploma. We're often influenced by what we see or hear on social media. Beware of disinformation campaigns targeting Black communities by using cultural issues to incite divisions, spread false information, and negatively influence public opinions. We're in this together, and together we can stay informed and empowered. Learn more at NBCIT.org. This public service announcement is from the National Black Cultural Information Trust. I'll be here to hear what's on your mind. Take this time to talk and get it right You know I'll be there all your life When you need me, I'll be by your side By your side And every day is a different day Everything is in everything Even when you think Things can never ever be the same When 
the adults in a child's life talk early and often about the dangers of underage drinking, the message gets stronger every time. I'll be by your side. Talk. They hear you. You're listening to Word Radio, 96.1 FM and 900 AM WURD, independent black media. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com. Um, family, we've been talking with John Barber. Donovan and I have known John for eons, for eons and eons, have, you know, tons of experiences yeah. with John. And we just found out. <laughs> right? <laughs> just found out of a life-changing experience john had um in his first year of college yeah which uh, you talk about you talk about experiences i cannot imagine and especially when we're still in when we're still in 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 school uh, even college, even college, because you're still finding your st- yourself, you're still finding your way. Yeah. And there are a lot of things that you're dealing with personally about who you are. And you say, yeah, I had a brain aneurysm. And then I came back and I was wearing this, you know, bandage and people were looking and they were taking photos. And then you said, yeah, but you know, my parents were there. My mom, my dad, they talked to me. And then, and then was I it a bandage to or go was back it, out and play. It was a bandage or was it a helmet? Let's be honest. Don't do it. <laughs> he did. What? I'm just... Let's just be honest. We're in a safe Ooh, space. We're in a safe space. Bless him, bless him, what, what was it? A yellow it helmet? A, a yellow. It was a bandage that I had to change myself. You know. You know. Huh. Oh All gosh. I'm saying is, you're in a safe space. You, know, and if you wore a helmet. I was fortunate. I, when I say I was fortunate that it was just a small area that they had to go into, so oh it would have been a helmet had it been a bigger area. You know, because you. When they go into your scalp or anything like that. Listen, mm. if you if if it did actually happen to be a helmet, <laughs> a big old yellow helmet that said fragile on it. No. That, that's okay. You're in a safe space. I just want you to know that. Like Apparently I would not, not laugh at you right <laughs> now. Apparently I wouldn't not. even laugh at you right now. Now later I'm not feeling in a safe space right now with my yellow hat with a more on it. So I can imagine if it's safe fragile. <laughs> But this, go ahead, continue, David. I'm sorry. What are you saying? No, no, no. You, you, if you, is that a snug fit hat? Is that, a, is that, a, is that, a, is, that a, is that a flex fit hat? It's from I don't the know. West uh, brand. Oh, yeah. that's nice. I got it on right. your website earlier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I no, that's a beautiful life, hat. I, life. Oh, a beautiful I couldn't get the love of life when it was sold out, so I bought no more. Oh, uh, that's that's good. I don't. I can't even see a wrinkle in it. You you are occupying every inch see. of that hat. Anyway, I try to support that. I try to do what I can do. Thank you. Carol, hey, it's, so good, it's so good to be here with you and your <laughs> show, Carol. So. What is happening? W U R D family, listen, oh, we just have to we, we have to apologize, but we're not going to apologize. This is what we do. We we cut up with it's our good friend time. John Bar. It has it's been, been a long time, man. And thank you for sharing, though. On a serious note, it sounds like someone else from Philly should have played in that movie Concussion. But uh, I thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, boom. I just want so okay, so. So, how about me? so let's pivot again, okay, <laughs> John. So for me, everybody who who knows me, everybody with whom I've had a conversation about you knows how much I love you and appreciate you, and how much I big you up because you are that guy. Like, you know, John is my brother. He, I can talk to John about anything, and I have, and I still do talk to you about everything. That's right. Right. In any event, you are not only that and have not only been that for me, but you're that for so many other people. You, you've been so instrumental in, to the culture 
you know, and not just with regard to the tri-state. I mean, I remember the days when you were on tour, when you were doing the tours and you were instrumental in setting them up with, with and for other artists as well. How, <laughs> how, how, how do you manage to be as supportive and as present with all of us all the while, because your, your baby girl is a little grown woman now, but all the while yes, being did. a single father, how did you manage that? And how do you maintain doing that? Well, well I guess but as far as my daughter, Jada, shout out to Jada, whose birthday is on the 5th, August, I'm sorry, August 4th, August 4th. And um, cool, she'll be 26 years old. She is. So, uh -huh. um, and she's an old soul, but I, it, as they say, you know, to raise a child, it takes a tribe to raise it. A child. I've been mm. very blessed again. My parents, my brother Jerry Barber, my sister-in-law Marcella Barber. You know, all their support. Jada's mother. You know, although we didn't live in the same state and we weren't together, her mother uh, did a good job raising her throughout. You know, all our young and dumb days. But uh, we produced uh, a well-rounded woman who's very smart, beautiful, and I'm proud of her. So. That that part of it is a blessing, but um, mm -hmm. as far as the career and the music and tapping into um, different lanes, Carol was really just a learn by learn by. Uh, we kind of got thrown in the water in the hot boiling water. You might as well say when mm -hmm. we first started out working doing events, it was out of um, desperation breeds inspiration sometimes. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I was one of those guys that got tired of going to New York and DC to have a good time. You know, I felt like I was a young black professional trying to be professional. Um, and we didn't have those spaces to go to. I got a little worn out in Philadelphia. Um, it wasn't a lot of things. Uh, it was either too young or too old. And mm -hmm. for me at the time, too old was strictly jazz. Um, I hadn't been, I hadn't hit my jazz stride yet. And um, I had an introduction to it in college and I really liked jazz, but it was like, it was a refined space. You had your Zanzibar Blue, mm -hmm. that was like the place to go to. And I said, okay, outside of Zanzibar Blue, and of course, uh, Mo Better Blues made that scene real popular. Mm -hmm. Wear certain clothes and go hang out. <laughs> right. But what else did we have? And um, inspiration came from going to DC and I actually had a chance to to talk to guys like Mark Barnes, who owned Republic Garden. And oh, yeah. Love and um, uh, Big Scott over in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I, uh, to to, uh, I talked to Big Scott. Um, and there were there were guys that just basically told me, whatever you do, there was certain things you don't do. And one is use your mm -hmm. own money, which I didn't listen to either one of them because <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, it was no other way. You had no brand. You know, it was no brand right. who's going to invest in you. You're not going to get any sponsors. You have no history of doing any events. All you have is a concept in your head. And I was just blessed to have people that believed in a vision. And in the beginning, you know, it was like really literally sitting on the step. We talking about nowhere to go. Hear a song by Ja Rule the Damager called Come Clean. And we come up with the name Come Clean Productions, and, you know, with a K-L-E-E-N instead of C-L-E-A-N. And, um, you know, really, you're hearing the beat. We're like, whoa, this is crazy. Come Clean Productions, all nine to five workers, want, use our own money to finance and make this thing happen and, and build this dream. And then um, you start out doing some comedy parties, parties around the University of Penn area. It kind of grew, grew. We went to Delaware, started doing comedy shows. Uh, Soul Comedy Cafe was the original comedy uh, show. To Ray runs that mm -hmm. show now and host. He took it and just made it blow into a whole nother stratosphere. But, you know, uh, we and then we took comedy. And, and then in one, one party, uh, DJ Rich Medina was DJing. And I'll never forget it. Rich was anti the establishment. I'm not playing Biggie. I'm not playing Jay-Z. I'm not playing all the hot music in, in the era, you know, Biggie was really big at the time. And he stopped the music in the middle of a party and started doing poetry. So at this time, I'm going through the roof. I'm like, yo, what is he doing? And I, and But then when he finished, the crowd started applauding. And I was like, mm. we on to something. So I started going to Buttermilk Worldwide, which is a well-known poetry event. 
in Philly. That was my introduction to Jill Scott doing poetry and uh, Black Ice and uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Remember, uh, Lady Danko used to get out. It was like a lot of people that were, were into the, it was the coffee shop poetry vibe, but at a small little bar located in brewery town, the area. Uh, then, uh, so it was comedy, it was the poetry. We already knew about putting parties together. It was the live music element. And that's when what was missing. And um, Carol, I, you know, I tell everybody, you were the inspiration. I don't know where I saw you perform, but it was like, I said, okay, we got to find a way to book her. And she's mm. not going to be even coming to our little show yet because we don't have anybody coming to it. <laughs> we want to know anything about it. And um, so I went to the Blue Moon Jazz Club and um, oh, wow. we were in the back room. And, then, and I think the first show was probably about 13 people in the room. And uh, I just remember the experience was like, we were really nervous, didn't know what to do because parties was one thing. We pack a house in a party, but this is our first show and there's only 13 people here. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. And then the host was D. Lee, who was yeah. on mm-hmm. radio. Radio, yeah. Popular comedian at the time. And D got called away to do something for HBO. So we had no host. So now people are in the room, they're waiting, and I'm going back and forth with my partners and you know, the guys that were part of Come Clean at the time. And they're like, man, you got to go up there and do it. And that was my introduction in the hosting. And, wow. Uh, and I went out in my best hip hop baggy clothes wearing <laughs> <laughs> everything, I thought, everything I thought I saw on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I to the stage, welcome to Blue Fall. And this girl looked at me in the audience, and I don't forget, she looked, she said, come here. <laughs> and I went over to her between acts, and she said, you look cool, be cool. You yelling at me. You <laughs> just talk to me, make me feel out, make me feel welcome. And I looked and it just it's funny, I just calmed down. Mm-hmm. And um, true story, years mm-hmm. later, and I'm touring and I'm hosting a tour. I'm at the House of Blues on stage, John Legend, the roots, and I look in the crowd, and this woman is sitting in the front seat. She's standing, well, she's standing right in front of the stage. And she blows a kiss at me and mouths, I'm so proud of you. And I, oh. and I said, that. so uh, <laughs> security, Doom, Big Doom, wow. who was our security, head of security. I said, Doom, I need her to come backstage. I brought her backstage and had her introduced to all the artists backstage, wow. and autographs. And I told her, I said, if it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't have continued doing this. Because I had no idea. It wasn't like it was on my, something I had pursued. Mm-hmm. Right, right. It just happened, you know. And, um, you know, it really came together out of passion. Like I said, it's pretty, the desperation, the inspiration, but then you got to be passionate about the arts and have respect for it. Yeah. And that came from James Poison. Mm. James Poison set me down and told me if I, and I tell young promoters who want to get in the music event planning space, you have to, it's about your musicians, get yourself good musicians, great sound, and mm-hmm. be prepared to pay them. I said, you don't want to have the name that you don't pay people. Mm-hmm. You know? True. It's one thing if you go into it and they understand what the situation is and they're willing to come and work with you, but don't have them work all night and then don't get those people away. That's right. So, and Donovan, you can attest to this. There were a lot of times you saw <laughs> run, runs to the Mac machine to go pay mm-hmm. the budget if it was a light night and that was all part of the building. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those were the days, weren't they? <laughs> you yeah, know, we came a long way from there, but it, it pays to be creative. You know, mm-hmm. everybody, and you can come up with the concepts. And sometimes people don't catch it until it's popular somewhere else, or when they start hearing about it. You got to remember, it wasn't the social media days. Everything was right. Like combat was word That's of right. mouth and flyers. Yeah. And a website. Yes. And the right. flyers would you had to draw people to your website in order to see who you were, or a video clip, or what you were about. So the work back then is so much harder. That's why some of the events now you have a plethora of events, and sometimes things get a little watered down because all they gotta do is put it on social media. Yep. You know, I just tell you, mm-hmm. sound good when you get to like, wait a minute. It's just four walls and a DJ. You know, or, or you know, and shout out to the DJs because we had some amazing DJs too that helped build 
our brand in the event. So. Indeed. Absolutely. 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 And, you know, an interesting thing also is that you also have to take into account the, you know, the city itself, Philadelphia versus, yes. you know, Delaware versus Jersey. Mm -hmm. There is a different energy. And when we come back from, you know, our break, we're going to talk a little bit about that, you know, about yeah. the <laughs> about the networking and party space and the event space. And, yeah. and you know, we're going to get into some of that. But if you're just now tuning in, you're listening to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. We'll be right back with some more juicy conversation right after this. I'll never forget the day I nearly died. I was a young journalist with a great career, starting a family. The only way we found out I had any kind of heart issue was when I went into sudden death. My coworkers sprung into action. They've recently been trained in life-saving CPR protocols developed by the American Heart Association. They're the ones that kept me alive until the medics came. They did many tests on me in the hospital after my cardiac arrest and created a treatment plan, all with research from the American Heart Association. I think unless you are a heart disease patient, you may not know how much work the American Heart Association does behind the scenes to save your life. Since my cardiac arrest, I've had two more children. I've watched all three of my children grow into adulthood. I'm gonna cry now graduate from college my daughter got married i have grandchildren and i'm still here learn more about the american heart association's work at helpheart.org imagine you on a deserted island all by yourself or even being in a crowd of people yet still feeling alone that's what being a victim of sexual assault can feel like victims of sexual assault are at an increased risk for developing depression ptsd substance abuse eating disorders and anxiety sexual assault can happen to anyone and is any unwanted sexual contact such as unwanted touching fondling groping or even rape no always means no so speak up and speak out it's on us to stop sexual assault everyone loves a champion Someone whose performance puts them head and shoulders above the rest. But not all champions wear a medal or hoist a trophy. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, we see champions everywhere we look. In every sport, on every court, we're building a foundation to ensure all athletes are safe, supported, and strengthened. We believe abuse can be prevented by taking a hard look at how we coach, how we train, and how we interact after the last whistle. We have provided over 2 million safe sport trainers. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, ending abuse is not just our job. It's our promise. The thing that drives me every day as a dad is him. Every day he's hungry for something. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that he's a good person. I think the advice I would give is you don't need to know all the answers. It's okay to make mistakes. As long as it's coming from love, then it kind of starts to work itself out. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tanya Hopkins, a.k.a. The Food Griot, the host of Savory and Sweet, a new show about food, history, and culture. Savory and Sweet is a flavorful exploration of food marinated in the black experience, seared with history and brazen culture. Each week, I'll fold in conversations that center food and drink at the intersection of business, health and well-being, entertainment, education, and innovation while separating the facts from fiction on the sometimes surprising origins of what we eat and drink. So join me, the Food Griot, and special guests for Savory and Sweet, food history and culture, every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., exclusively on Word, Progressive Black Talk Media. 
You're listening to Word Radio, 96.1 FM and 900 AM WURD, independent black media. Welcome back to Love and Life here on WURD Radio, a progressive black talk media where we talk about everything under the sun, love and life. And when it comes to the, the life part, you know, life of the party, life of the situation, life of the city, we have a subject matter expert here to help us along, you know, the way and be a curator, if you will, offer some additional insight and perspective. Uh, his name is John Barber, and we've had such a great conversation thus far. And, and thanks again, John, for making the time. You know, I, alongside my partner in crime, Carol Riddick, we have more than an hour's worth of time uh, that, you know, that we need to circle back to you to talk about some of these other new things that we're learning about you. But we are happy for the time you've given us um, this this evening, man. So, so tell us a little bit more about your experience, your perspective of, you know, the space that we're in here in this tri-state area when it comes to not just the networking, right? You talked about, you know, the bringing in live music and a different approach, right? Uh, something that's more local, not having to go to D.C. or go to New York to have those experiences, but to bring it here in our backyard and the response from the people. You know, I know you mentioned just your first show in the, the 13. Uh, willing participants, the supporters that got it started, but um, I, you know, I've seen the show grow and I've had different ebbs and flows as well in terms of experiences. But I want to hear from you as you look back at your career in this space. What are some of your thoughts? You know what, my my lead thought is humble don't stumble, and Philly has mm. been mad supportive of myself as an individual and Come Clean Productions. Because that 13, I keep referencing that 13 people in the room because, you know, and, and Carol and Dom, you both can test that 13 group to, grew to 500 at, mm -hmm. at the Academy of Natural Science mm -hmm. at the sure. Kendall Center for NBA All-Star Weekend and was touted as one of the best events for NBA All-Star Weekend. We featured, you know, Faith Evans and Kenny Lattimore and, and mm -hmm. Ed Gray and, and um, Cedric the Entertainer and, and um and some of our homegrown people that have been part of the experience the whole time. So for me, um, you know, it's wild to sit back because we still be we still get those creative juices flowing. And one thing I learned about Philadelphia is Philadelphia is going to come if you don't oversaturate Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And you make people feel special, um, treat them the way you want to be treated. You probably mm -hmm. provide a safe space when you probably provide a venue let them know that this is an experience. It's not just an event and you want them to come back. And, um, you know, I've, I've formed partnerships with different organizations, done a bunch of them, you know, the Philly super friends, the Philadelphia experience, mm -hmm. um, Donovan, you and I have teamed up on a number of occasions doing events. Um, yeah. um, but it's never been about us. It was never about just a financial gain. Financial gain has always been about, the brand building and about uh, trying to show love to each other and show that Philly can support Philly. Mm -hmm. You know, you look yeah. at the landscape of an Atlanta and you look at New Orleans and how at that time, though Atlanta really is the best model. You look at how they support each other in a lot of ways. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we started growing, we started expanding from Philly, Delaware, Jersey, Atlanta. Um, yeah. LA, we've done PA to LA, we would call it, you know, and, mm -hmm. bring, that, and bring our brand out there. But, um, and we continue to make partners and have friends in different states that when the budget allows, we bring the talent to them and vice versa. We bring mm -hmm. that talent here. Um, Philly is dynamic, it's a big city. I love Philadelphia. We're going through some crazy changes here in life 
in general, post COVID, yeah, um, street violence, uh, the fight for resources of education and employment, mm -hmm. economic stability here, and I had to bring that whole thing in because all that is what makes up the city. You know, we're not just a party town. I'm not just a party person. You know, um, all of our experiences and our growth has taken us into our careers and, um, you know, some life changing moments yeah. mm -hmm. make us change course. So, you know, I come off tour, I'm going to education because dad has cancer four times. You know, um, mom, mom mm. ends up with dementia, you know, fighting dementia. Mm. You know, yeah. I'm, you, you jump into a lane where you want to be purposeful and, and, uh, that next sense of not just self-fulfillment, but in making an impact. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So education started then I, I fought to become a CFO for the Urban League and where I felt like economic stability and building up, I want that cultural, I wanted to make a cultural impact in our community, uplift our communities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the Urban League definitely, I support them to this day um, and the mission. And the job is not easy, but it's all about building, the, it's about the brand and building trust. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to come back and work for the fund for the school district and raise money for our Philadelphia public schools, because we saw that we're helping the adults, but there's a gap. There was a gap catching them as young kids and, and building that, those career pathways that are going to help them be sustainable as adults. So, and, um, to be able to go back and do that in real life and find help people get educated, help people get certifications, uh, and realize everyone's not going to a four year college, mm -hmm. you right. know, but, but you can get a trade and you can and be uh, 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 a paid citizen and be a productive citizen. That was one thing, but then to be able to go back and use all those tools from entertainment and music and say, so now we're going to bring. We can we can offer students an opportunity to learn about the music business, right? And, and say, hey, you can be you can be a, a professional and live out of Philadelphia, and you don't have to be a, a rapper, you don't have to be the artist, the singer. But if you're a musician, here's a talent. You can be business management. Um, mm -hmm. and this is why you take those bookkeeping and accounting courses and marketing courses mm -hmm. as CCP that you can turn over and use in your career to use yourself to, to push yourself as a product or the materials you create. And the same thing with film, you know, so um, being, a, being a part of putting those programs up in those organizations, the DASH program with music, uh, the Greater Film, the film Office with film, um, get into the public schools was just realizing that we got to keep our kids engaged. And mm -hmm. it's right now with the streets being wild and it's the, it's the wild wild west out here yeah so we pray but we know people are hungry it's a hunger factor um again people have not recovered from what we went through trauma wise with covid and yeah. there is a yeah. lot of anger and there's a lot of stress but we're taking it out on each other yeah you know and and entertainment has always been a way of release and entertainment has always been there through all kinds of economic declines. You know, people will pay a couple of dollars to go hear that song that's going to make them forget the moments that we're currently living. So um, that's what inspires me to keep doing what I do outside of my, my regular work is thinking that we provide a service, you know? So when you ask me why you continue to do it or what make, keeps you creative, because it's never been about me. Mm -hmm. you know, we all we all serve a purpose, and you know along that way we we get hit. Things hurt, things hurt. but Oof. if we sit there and we grown, we you you kind of got to brush the dirt off after a while, and be able to still go back out there and do the next thing, you know. And and I I try to support all these young guys coming out now that have all these ideas, and I'm blessed that they will talk to me and we you know John we need to do a collab or you know you the OG, you know, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, like that. I have no desire to be out every day of the night of the week, but I'll support what you have because I know you're putting the efforts. And if it's going to be quality, send me your information. I will post it. I will get it. And, out. and John, I, speaking of that, right there, we'll we'll continue to support you and all your endeavors. I, you know, we are at the end of an hour. 
a power hour. And you know what? We have to do a part two. So we're going to have to invite you to do this again so that we can um, continue to just learn more about all the different spaces that you occupy. And uh, Carol, any, any last words for me? Always, always. Remember, everybody, we're all in this together. So be good to you and to those around you. Have a great night, a great morning. And a great rest of your day. And make sure you join us at midnight, Sunday through Thursday, for another edition of Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Y'all be well. Thank you, Carol Dobbin. Hi, I'm Tanya Hopkins, a.k.a. The Food Griot, the host of Savory and Sweet, a new show about food, history, and culture. Savory and Sweet is a flavorful exploration of food marinated in the Black experience, seared with history and brazen culture. Each week, I'll fold in conversations that center food and drink at the intersection of business, health and well-being, entertainment, education, and innovation while separating the facts from fiction on the sometimes surprising origins of what we eat and drink. So join me, the Food Griot, and special guests for Savory and Sweet, food history and culture, every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., exclusively on Word, Progressive Black Talk Media. You know, a lot of people say, when you're going somewhere, you don't want to look back. But I beg a different. For her to see her father celebrate his graduation, it's the best feeling in the world. I can't lie and say it was easy. But sometimes you just have to stop everything and take it in. I looked at everything in a different light. And I realized it started with me going back and getting my high school diploma. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? Now she's like, you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. When you don't know where to turn, let 211 be your guiding light. Two one one, how can I help you? Our guides are ready to connect you with the help you need. help with food, health care, mental health, and other resources. Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211. Get connected. Get help. band with us? I'm going to play my clarinet. And Elmo's going to play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia knows. Mm -hmm. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> play band. Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. I remember this one moment. I ran to kind of the water edge, and my mom said something along the lines of like, now it's your turn. Take that first step. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. <laughs> There's some light within her that makes me continue to do the climate science work that I do. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. As moms, we care about our children and the environment they grow up in. And for Mia, I want you to know that I worked really hard to be a part of the change and to make it a better place for you. Oh, hey, 
Julia, are you ready to play band with us? I'm going to play my clarinet. And Elmo's going to play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia knows. Mm -hmm. With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> play band. <sighs> Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. Lifting every voice till earth and heaven ring. This is Word Radio, 96.1 FM and 900 AM WURD, Philadelphia. Play.